I want to bring in um, some of the heroes of 9-11, both clergy, police, and firemen. Louis Calderon, he is an EMT. Two days after 9-11, Louis dug out a firefighter who had been buried in the rubble. From the NYPD, Pete Panucci, he had, um, he had got off work at about 8 a.m., jumped into his car with three firefighters and then rushed to the scene. Two of the three were killed. Brian McCabe, he is a former police sergeant. He organized the, uh, the detectives to respond. He's also one of the lead guys in the anthrax investigation that happened afterwards. Thomas Tracha, he, is, uh, he was at ground zero getting people away from the towers when they spotted a suspicious man in a building that was supposed to be evacuated. They went after him, busted a huge drug ring while the towers were burning just a couple of blocks away. Uh, John De Niro, he was a Brooklyn detective who was also at ground zero. From the fire department, Tom Colleen, he is a firefighter on Long Island. He helped organize the assistance response to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, New York Fire Department in manpower and equipment. And this guy. Anybody recognize this guy? In case you don't, do you have it? You might recognize him if I do this. This is Bob Beckwith. Thank you, sir. How are you, Bob? Very good. Very good. Thank you guys for uh, for coming. I I, uh, I I tell you, it was a. Um, I thought it was a travesty, and I'm not going to ask you guys to comment on it, but I thought it was a travesty on what happened yesterday that you guys weren't recognized. What, um, what has happened to, to you since we last saw you with a bullhorn? Oh, yeah. Well, yesterday I went to, to a point lookout where I go every year. I never went to ground zero because I don't belong there. I didn't lose anybody, and that's for the people who lost, and that's what I believed. So that's why I never went down. But I go to a point lookout, and I... They have a beautiful ceremony there with the Twin Towers and the waterfalls and all. Well done. We really had a nice turnout yesterday. Do you guys feel like we have, have we, have we done the, there you go, have we done the things that we're supposed to do for, I'm going to get to the clergy here in a second. How are you, Rabbi? Good to see you. Um, uh, have we done the things that we were supposed to do? Are we, are we better off now 10 years later, do you think? Anybody want to comment on that? You see, the NYPD has uh, risen. Um, sad lessons learned that day, but uh, I think uh, no matter what your perspective, um, there can be little, little argument that uh, the, the threat was recognized, mm -hmm. and um, even to the point of deploying detectives overseas, that uh, uh, strategies are in place to try to meet the threat that uh, obvious is, uh, you know, the threat level doesn't rise day to day. Do people, it's always there. Do people still come up to you in the streets and shake your hands and say thank you? No? Not, yes? No? Not yes, really? Sometimes. 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 Thank, you. thank 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 you. Um, now, I brought the, I brought the um, clergy in. Leading us in prayer is uh, uh, Bishop uh, Joseph Matera. He is joined by Rabbi Ken, Rabbi Ken Shapiro and Pastor, uh, uh, Mul how do you say your last name? Mullery. Mullery Jean-Pierre. Uh, no, Pastor, will you uh, lead us? If you don't mind, we thought it would be appropriate since we didn't do it yesterday to have a quick word uh, of prayer. Let's all close our eyes. Let's pray. Dear Lord of heaven and earth, first of all, we want to thank you for our life. We thank you, God, that we can reflect of the past 10 years and we could learn not to take anything for granted. We could learn to live a life as though it's our last day. And we could learn to live a life of purpose instead of pleasure, of meaning, something that transcends our own momentary existence. And Lord, we want to especially thank you for those first responders who typified living a life of transcendence as they lived and gave their life running into buildings while everybody else is running out, knowing that that may be the last act they'd ever do. We want to thank you for those who have passed on. We will never forget them. We will never forget those true heroes 
instead of the false heroes that are being depicted today in American culture on television. And Lord, we want to thank you for the first responders that are here in this room and those who are still with us to tell us the stories, to give us wisdom, to share with us how it has impacted their life. And Lord, we do pray that this country would once again turn back to the Judeo-Christian values that made it great. On that day, we know even news anchors were praying and asking for prayer and crying. Church attendance was at an all-time high that next Sunday, and yet we began to forget. We pray that you would again bring us back to that place of having a proper perspective. And Lord, we pray that in the coming elections that we would elect people with wisdom and we pray that you would help us, O oh God, once again to trust in you. Because you said in your word, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for you are with us. And we thank you that you are an ever-present help in time of trouble. And Lord, we do trust in you. We know that no matter what we do, ultimately we need to depend on you. So we thank you for all those that are here. We thank you for uh, Mr. Beck and the messages that he's bringing forth and we pray for your wisdom and protection, and we pray that America will once again be the greatest nation, not only now, but for generations, and that the decline of our country would stop because of the truth that's being spoken by many of us who are here and those who are like Mr. Beck, who is speaking the truth to our nation. And we thank you for this. Amen. Amen. Amen.